Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Mosaic Safety Controller First Program Part 1. And last time what we did was we installed the software. So that's what we first started up and that's what you see on my screen right now. Um, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will also be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen, when we first start out the um, the MSD, Mesoic Safety Designer software, it will come up with what's new. So we can actually close that down. And if we go into, this is the uh, blank screen now that we have. And if we go into the help file under the question mark, you will see that this is where my help file is, my boat and what's new. So I can actually call that up anytime I'd like to. Now, under the options, you can see we can tell the grid size for our working area, which is right here. And then we also have the show what's new at startup. We can de disable that. And then our language, we can choose what language we actually want to program in. So we'll leave it at English. And you'll notice here, again, this is my working space. And over here we have our items, our operators, and our configuration here. So the first thing we're going to do is actually start a new project. Now we can do that with this uh, icon up on the menu here, which is new project, or we can go project, new project. And when we do, we have an icon up here that tells me I can fill out the information as such as company, uh, user, let's put my name here. And what we'll do is we will put in first project and so we fill out this project information so we'll hit OK and now it'll actually, actually ask me for the configuration of my mosaic my modular safety integrated controller so from last time on the hardware we actually had an M1 not an M1S so let's change that and I'm not sure the version number so let's go to uh, between four and five then we'll select our next configurated model that we put it together which was a MOS 8 which is located right here and then the third thing third module that we had in our configuration on hardware was an MR2 which is our uh, safety relay output module which does not count as a module so I do not have to put it into my configuration so currently right now I am done we could just hit OK. And what you'll see is now that my configuration shows up right here. It shows I have a master and an expansion eight status output card. And also there's a visual indication down in the right hand corner. So let's just save that project. And when we save the project, it'll pull up, pull up and we'll just call it first project and we'll hit save. You'll notice it comes up on the top of my screen now that I have my project saved and that's what it's called. So the first thing we'll do is actually add an item to my uh, map here. And what we'll do is add a e-stop. And you'll notice that it actually tells me about e-stops and the function of that. If I click on the stop and drag it on to my work area you will see now that I can uh, manipulate it around I can move it to wherever I like to and that looks pretty good there and when I click on it you will notice that my property shows up over here so I can change the property or the settings of that function over here you can also see that I can have a, a item description and we'll just call that um, emergency stop and I'll just put, I'll just put uh, test and you'll see that it actually appears right here on top of my actual unit my input unit another thing we can do is we can actually assign the input to that e-stop from our controller and once I click on the input there you'll see that my property comes up again and we will select the first input of the M1 and we can actually put uh, 
First input. So you can see that we can label everything that we have on our, our uh, sheet here, our work area. Next, what we'll do is we will look for an output. So we'll just um, minimize that input here. And let's look at an output and we will do a status output. And we'll place that onto our work area. Reposition a little bit here so that uh, we can see it better. That looks pretty good. And again, if we hold on to the status, you'll see that we have our status property here. And what you'll notice is we do the output. We'll do the status output and our status one. And you'll notice that it actually tells me the pin numbers when I do that. This, this particular one on M1 is pin number eight. And over here on our input, it's pin 17. So we can call this uh, uh, status output. And we could label this as on when e stop is on. Or e stop OK. Again, it's up to us to decide exactly what we want to, uh, how we want to label it. Then what we can do is we can actually join the output of this to the input of our status output. When we do that, you'll notice that my uh, arrow actually changes to a crosshairs and I can just join them up and there we go so now that actually has joined my e-stop to my status output and what I can do now is go up to my ver validation just to check my circuit to ensure that it's okay and so we'll do that and it comes back that our project result is okay You'll see my input, my function blocks one. So what it's basically telling me is that my circuit is viable and it's functional. So let's hit OK. Now you'll notice that we also have a zoom function down here. And that zoom function, we can actually um, increase the size of what we're looking at here. So if we increase it, uh, we'll do 142. You can see everything gets a little brighter or a little bigger for us. So that is our solution. Let's save that, make sure that we have that saved. We can hit the icon here, or we can go file, save. And now we have also simulation. So now we can simulate our project in or before we actually do anything with the controller. So there's icons here, schematic simulation, and then we can manage the graphical simulation here. Um, the simulation and we'll just call that up now what you'll notice is that everything all my menus uh, disappear we're actually in simulation mode now and what it allows me to do is click on my e-stop and when I do it changes the status and you see my output now turns on which is now indicated here in green which goes to my status which then turns of course by my output on so I turn that off and everything then returns and goes back off again. So on off. So this is a good indication to briefly check your logic before you actually download it to the uh, controller itself and start monitoring and testing uh, the actual application. So in order to get out of this, what we will do is actually hit us. Uh, uh, simulation again and now we're back to our programming menu we'll just save that and the other thing at any time we have a unit or an item or property and you hit the F1 key or the help menu it will actually pop up and give you a, a nice help menu on all everything about that component and all the different functions and all the different features that you can set within that controller or that uh, item that we're selecting. The same with the output status. Again, hit F1, and you will see everything on that status output that we can set. 
Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want to get our two free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. Now, a new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the, to the, hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription in order to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.